it's ready. Okay, so a couple days ago, I was on Fiverr, which is the website where you can like buy services from people. And I saw that there was someone willing to animate any story that you send them. So I recorded something and I, I just got it back. So moment of truth, let's see what we got. Hello and welcome back to Old Man Shouting at Cloud. I'm Jarvis and today we're talking about My Story Animated, which is just the latest in clickbait animation channels full of overdramatic and probably fake stories submitted by kids. My Story Animated describes themselves as a digital platform that provides people with the opportunity to share their most interesting and life-changing stories with the world. It's a noble cause. Send us your story if you think it's worth sharing and we will turn it into an animated video that describes it perfectly. Now, if that sounds a lot like Actually Happened, which is another animation channel with exactly the same premise that's been on trending a lot lately, that's because it is. And if you account for the fact that Actually Happened is just a copy of Story Booth, which is a legitimate channel that actually works with kids, that would make My Story Animated a copy of a copy. And not like a fun copy either, like like Mewtwo or NSYNC. Um, or the fact that I'm a copy of every commentary YouTuber. It's a bad copy with absurd clickbait and, and really lazy production quality, which isn't the fault of the people who animate the stories, but I'll get into that later. It's just clear to me that this is a money grab. Like we're witnessing the birth of a content farm. Their channel started three months ago, uh, shortly after my video about actually happened. I wouldn't give them any ideas. <laughs> and they've since grown to over 500,000 subscribers with such viral hits as, um, I was obsessed with our neighbor's Ferrari, so I stole it. I am too pretty. And of course, I'm the richest girl in school, and it's embarrassing. I first found out about this channel from my subreddit after I made my first video about Actually Happened. Um, and if you're not familiar with Actually Happened, all you really need to know is that they claim to animate stories that kids send to them, um, but it's more likely <laughs> that they're just, wait for it, making it all up, or, uh, stealing it from Reddit verbatim. This first one is called, I broke up with my girlfriend because of potatoes. Hi, I'm Andy. What are the odds that this oddly specific story was also posted to the Today I Fucked Up subreddit three years ago? I'm not trying to say that copying is inherently bad, like everybody takes inspiration from something, but my story animated is such a copy of actually happened that when they made the channel, the subscribe button or the subscribe link on their about page still linked to actually happened. The main difference between the two is that my story animated has, has somehow figured out how to invest even less in production quality. It's actually quite impressive. And unlike Actually Happened, which is run by our dear friends at Five Minute Crafts, My Story Animated is an independent operation run by an Italian man named Domino who loves cartoons and animates each video by hand with tender love and care. Just kidding, it's run by an Israeli app developer called Zvoid. Now Zvoid is a company you've definitely heard of. They are the creative minds behind extraordinary apps and websites, such as, um, best-selling game and this mock-up uh, of a generic social media app. Most of their stories are about extremely unrelatable people that definitely don't exist. So let's just start with, um, I was too innocent when I got into the top secret vampire society. This one is about a girl who's always been obsessed with vampires <laughs> until one day she decides to be one. Hi, my name's Zara and I have this real fascination with vampires. By fascination, she means she read Twilight and watches vampire TV shows. The older I get, the more I realize that maybe I actually have got what it takes to become a vampire. Got what it takes? <laughs> Are there people working their way up to vampire? What do you have to this weekend? Oh, you know me. Just gonna put on some sunscreen and sit in the dark, trying to get pale. I'm super pale for starters, and I do have slightly pointy teeth. And guys, this bit is so weird, but I'm properly allergic to garlic. She's making it sound like being a vampire is a sport where they recruit you for your natural abilities. Like you go into the school guidance counselor and she's like, well, you're too short for basketball. What other traits do you have? Um, I, I've got this garlic allergy. Garlic allergy? Why didn't you say that sooner? We have the perfect spot for you on J JV Vampire. So she's unfortunately ostracized from her peers because of course she's a vampire and no other vampires go to her school. I speak to some friends online who also want to be vampires, but they all live in Germany and Romania. I wish I could go live in Europe one day. That's where most of the vampires seem to be. 
Unfortunately for her, uh, she wasn't having any luck finding local communities because she was just searching the words local community. And one day, I found what I was looking for. It seemed like there was a group nearby, but every time I tried to get more info, it was like getting stuck at a dead end. They seemed to be really top secret. I like how she, she's like, it must be top secret because I don't know the password. Eventually, she makes her way to a bat forum where someone finally gives her the super secret password. Jackpot, there were a group of about 12 other teens who got together once a week to have meetings. All I had to do was give them the password that the guy had given me on the forum, and I was in. <laughs> this is such a scam. <laughs> What's the password? Cool vampire, you got it, welcome to the club. I was so excited for that first meeting. It took place at this hut in a forest on the outskirts of town. So Zara goes to her first vampire meeting, which is definitely a cult, and she gets initiated. But she can't tell us much about the details. I don't really want to go into details. Because that might, well, honestly, it would uh, probably help us determine that this didn't actually happen, and we can't have that. During the next week, I found myself feeling less excited about the next meeting. By the time the second vampire meeting rolls around, Zara's starting to get cold feet, but she goes anyway. When the day arrived for the next meeting, I still went along because I didn't want them to think I was a chicken. You'd think she'd be a little more discreet about the giant reminder that shows up on her screen that says vampire meeting. When I arrived, there was a coffin lying outside. This is your vampire society? <laughs> they look like a group of young professionals. I like how the coffin has like a different art style uh, because it wasn't included in their like animation toolkit. So they probably just like Googled coffin. <laughs> they told me that there was one step left in my initiation process. I had to spend the night sleeping in the coffin. The leader picked me up and made me lie down in the coffin. Then they shut the lid. Suddenly I realized this wasn't the life I wanted. Oh, that was when you realized. <laughs> they weren't even real vampires. No, Zara, they aren't real vampires. It turns out that Zara's been bamboozled by the world's most adorable gang. Fortunately, just in the nick of time, Zara's parents arrive, <laughs> probably because they saw her giant calendar notification. And also the cops are there to arrest those cute little criminals. <laughs> it turns out the leader and three of the other vampires are actually a gang that the cops had been trying to hunt down for ages. Wanted. So anyway, yeah, this is a story that actually happened. If I've learned anything from this, it's that we really need to be careful not to fall for this kind of scam. I, I still don't understand the scam. They like tricked people who really want to be vampires and there can't be that many people <laughs> who fit that description. Then they initiate them by putting them in a coffin. Do they leave them there to die? I. I don't understand. So the best part of this video is when they include a summary of a police statement at the end of it, because they, I don't know, they're trying to pretend that it's real. Thanks to Zara, we arrested this group, but there might be more groups out there. This is what confuses me the most about these channels because they, you didn't have to include this. You, you're, you don't have to pretend that this is a real story. The police are not releasing a statement on this random YouTube channel, yet they continue to do this. Like this is just the beginning of a video called I found a thief in my room and I outsmarted him. We've attached a summary of the police report at the end of this video. A lot of their videos open with a message like this, like it's fucking law and order. Hello, I'm Clara and something absolutely terrifying happened to me. So I'm not gonna go through this whole story, but if you are wondering how she outsmarted the thief in her room, she called the police. As I picked up the phone, my mind went blank. I couldn't even remember what to call. <gasps> After a few seconds, I remembered. Oh, thank God. And the summary of the police report said that the thief was not locked up because it was his first time and he had no prior criminal record and he was only 16 years old. And they obtained the report from Clara parents. So, thanks police. Another thing about these videos actually happened included is that they attempt <laughs> to have a moral at the end of them. Um, emphasis on attempt, sometimes in life, people learn the wrong lessons from their mistakes. This story is an example of that. Are they warning us that the lesson of the video is gonna be bad? Just so you know, this is an example of a bad video. It seems like they outsourced this video like they do probably all of their videos and they got it back and we're like, uh-oh, <laughs> we have to put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video uh, so that people don't think we're insane. Hi guys, I'm Sheila. I just moved to a new school. Let me tell you about the scandal that caused me to switch schools. This video, by the way, is called, I told the truth to the wrong person and it ruined my life. Ever since I was a little girl, I had a habit of talking too much. I remember one time I got invited to a children's party and I was all over talking to every kid. I like how she refers to it as a, a children's party. She was also a child. When the birthday girl came out, I was surprised with what she was wearing. 
She wore a very big hat with like a thousand feathers on it. Is that cultural appropriation? Like, why is she wearing that hat? Couldn't contain myself, as always. I went up to her and said, Know what? You look like a nest. Got eggs? <laughs> Damn! Fuck! Whoa! Wow, you really got her with that one. She must have been so humiliated because her face turned bright red and she said, Please, stop. That's it? <laughs> stop that? True enough, the other kids were laughing too until I felt someone tugging at my hand. It was my mom. She could read me like a book. She could read you like a book? <laughs> you insulted the birthday girl out loud. It's an audiobook, at, at least. I recall another time when I was about 12. I knew that mom ordered something online for my birthday, so when I saw the mailman, I asked, do you have a package for me? He simply shrugged. Um, I feel like the animation, one, is not great, but uh, it also doesn't match the story because the dude is like, at her door with a gift. <laughs> Do you have a package for me? No. I felt disappointed, but didn't stop there. I prodded on, just don't bring them this Saturday. We're all going out, but our door key is at... Then I felt my mom yanking at my arms again. To me, it always felt like my mom was spoiling my fun. Come on, mom, just let me tell the delivery guy where the house key is. You're, you're spoiling my fun. Also, is it weird to anyone else that the only difference between her child self and her adult self is the length of her legs? <laughs> creeps me out. Until that time when I was in junior high. I had a classmate who was dating a cute guy. I thought he was gorgeous, and I couldn't believe he would go out with such a plain girl. Plain girl? They look exactly the same. So I made an anonymous Instagram account and took photos of him when he wasn't looking. Then I photoshopped myself into them, but blurred my face. Of course I wouldn't want them to recognize it was me. Okay, hold on. Uh, you took photos of this man when he wasn't looking, which is already sus, and then you photoshopped yourself into those photos and you blurred your face? How gullible are these kids? <laughs> yeah, he's cheating. Then I wrote sweet captions at the bottom. Until finally, they broke up. Uh, this Instagram caption says, if you love somebody, let them go. For if they return, they were always yours. If they don't, they never were. This sounds like something that would go on one of those emo Instagram accounts. Even if it was a real photo, isn't it weird that she blurred her face? Like that's not a normal thing you see on somebody's Instagram. So an Instagram account with no followers posted a photo of this dude and, and some unidentified girl with her face blurred and the girlfriend saw it and broke up with him. Makes sense to me. Another classmate started hanging out with me. She was so cool and often shared stuff with me. Her family stories, her problems, her crushes. Indeed, that is, that is how friends work. Then one time she texted me, have you heard of that famous IG account? I replied, what account? Mm, what account? I felt so proud. So I decided to tell her. She's so proud of destroying someone's relationship that she leaves her new friend a voice message with all the details. And that's when things start to turn. The following day, I waved to my friend when she came inside the classroom, but she totally ignored me. Got him. Then I saw her sit beside the ex-girlfriend of my crush. What? They were friends? Her new friend was a double agent, unfortunately, and outed her secrets to the whole class. I scrolled fast to our class's WhatsApp thread. We were right, guys. It was her all along. Just as the teacher was trying to calm everyone down, the bell rang, and I hurried out of the classroom. Look at her go. We decided that it's better if I switch schools because I was so determined that I was not going to go back there. You know, because she destroyed someone's relationship and doesn't want to face the consequences. Plus, the principal was very mad at me and my teachers were all disappointed. I mean, you can't expect me to stay where everyone hates me, right? Uh, yeah, we can. Y you should have to deal with the consequences of your actions. <laughs> it's kind of a thing about society. I learned the hard way, guys. So the next time you say something, think twice. There is a difference between being truthful and being tactless. The problem isn't that she told the truth. She sounds like one of those Scooby-Doo villains who like doesn't learn their lesson and, and thinks the only problem is that they got caught and they would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you silly kids and your stupid dog and oh my God, she looks exactly like Daphne. <laughs> okay, so the last video I wanna talk about of theirs has the least relatable title of all time. It's called, I'm the richest person in my school and it's embarrassing. Hello, my name's Jessica, and I want to tell you about something that is a little embarrassing for me. So, my dad just got a new job, and we had to move cities. So, of course, I had to find a new school. What's the big secret? Dad offered to drop me off, 
but I begged him to let me take the school bus like all the other kids. Okay, so she wants to fit in. That's pretty normal. It's not like my dad drives a really beat up old car. That's not why I didn't want to lift. Hmm, maybe this driverless convertible in the background is a hint. Also, why is she standing in the middle of the road? It's just, well, my dad's really rich. Like, stinking rich. I mean, can't you tell by the strange <laughs> geometric shapes in the background? He wanted to drop me off in his helicopter like he used to at my old school. Okay, pause. What? You used to get dropped off for school in a helicopter? This has got to be the biggest flex that I've ever heard in my whole life. I had to put in AirPods to feel better about myself. Other than the fact that this is impractical and you can't just fly into populated areas willy-nilly, no school would allow that. I hope I do okay on my Spanish test today. Uh, I was kind of struggling with chapter 10. Jessica's here. Jessica doesn't want to make a bad first impression, so she decides to take the bus, but uh-oh, it never comes. In the end, mom had to drive me in, and we found out that the school bus doesn't even come to my house because the school assumed it was some kind of fancy hotel. The flex is strong with this one. Also, public school bus routes, not a secret, definitely something you find out before school starts. The first day passed in a blur. At one point, I overheard two girls whispering about my designer backpack. The next day, everyone was smiling at me as I walked by, but then I'd hear them laugh and shout, Little Miss Rich. Is this a thing that happens? I don't think it's a thing that happens. <laughs> I couldn't believe word had already gotten out about my family being rich. It's hard enough being new, never mind being rich too. Yeah. Totally. I also didn't understand how they already knew. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was the Dolce & Gabbana backpack that tipped him off. Later that day, I caught a glimpse of something when I was walking to the toilet. Pinned next to the notice board was a selfie of me and my family on our boat. A classic notice board. Who does this? For this to work, you would have to know that a new rich kid was coming to school, print and frame, a, uh, acquire a photo of them, print and frame it, and put it on the notice board. And it's hard enough to wrangle those boars in the first place. Everyone was laughing behind my back. Sometimes I just wished we could be a normal family with a normal amount of money. Jessica wonders who would do such a thing, but suspects it was the teenage bullies in business casual attire who made fun of her backpack. Eventually she builds up the courage to confront the bullies who seemingly have backwards hands and ask them why. Why are you doing this to me? They ignored me and walked away laughing to themselves. Later that day, I realized no one was calling me Little Miss Rich anymore. A girl named Annie even asked me if I'd like to have lunch with her. It had worked. She did it after a grueling, 72 hours in her new school, she found a way to get the bullies to leave her alone. Uh, I, I certainly would like to know how she did it. That morning, I'd put a poster up on the notice board saying that, yes, my family is quite wealthy, but that doesn't make me a bad person and that I am still a normal kid like them. What sort of alien puts up a poster that just says, I am a normal kid? They're probably terrified. That's why they're not making fun of you anymore. I couldn't believe it when I saw the two popular girls walking towards me. They had their heads turned down and looked nervous. They apologized and said they were just jealous and hadn't mean to turn people against me. The whole video, they couldn't put this girl's arm down. <laughs> Look, I know I'm nitpicking the animation, but uh, I know someone didn't draw this frame by frame. It looks like they're using like a, a library or a toolkit of some kind. I found it. Look, it's it's Little Miss Rich. I guess, uh... I guess I'm gonna buy this. Okay, so why am I talking about this? My Story Animated to me represents another in a long list of content farms that just serve to make some company a bunch of money where they like find uh, a market. This time it's apparently animated story channels and they just like pump out a ton of like low quality content and uh, make money because they're able to advertise it to people who like don't know any better. We've seen this over and over again. And at this point I, I don't really know what more I can do or say about this kind of content. So I figured if you can't beat them, join them. Hi, my name's Jake. I'm a relatable American teenager who totally exists. And I wanted to tell you guys about something that's a little embarrassing for me. This video is called I'm Rich and Famous, but it's actually bad. And it's from my new animation channel. They actually animated my story, which animates stories that uh, probably happened to someone. I recently had to move cities, which of course means I also had to change schools. And the reason I moved keeps me up at night. It's just that, well, I'm disgustingly rich. 
I know. Pretty bad, right? Ugh. I literally don't even know how to spend all the money I have. And if that's not bad enough, I'm also extremely famous. I post pictures of myself on this new app called Tic Tac, and millions of people like them. Now, I'm like a national sensation. It's the worst. I had to get out of town because everyone was just too nice and respectful to me. All I want is for someone to bully me and treat me like the pile of absolute garbage I am. My new school seemed pretty awful, and it was also in a bad part of town, so I was excited. This place is bound to have bullies. I wanted to take the bus on my first day, but it turns out there are no roads that lead to the school, so I just had to use my lame teleporter to transport myself onto campus. Ugh. Hashtag rich kid probs, am I right? Around lunchtime, I found some bullies trying to take a nerd's lunch money, and I thought to myself, this is my chance. So, I approached them. Hello, bullies. I would like you to bully me now, I said. And then, the leader of the bullies turned to me. He said, you've held a mirror to my bullying behavior, and now I see that I was just projecting my own feelings of inferiority and lack of control onto others rather than dealing with them myself. I hereby resign as a bully and recommend you all join me in seeking counseling. I was so disappointed. They gave the nerd back his lunch money and everything. Ugh, my life is so hard. Guess I'll try a new school. I hope that by sharing my story, other people out there who literally have no problems in their life can also relate. The world is just made for us, I guess. I hope you enjoyed that. I spent way too long making it. And because just one story isn't gonna be enough for our new animation content farm, I also just got back the animation I ordered from Fiverr. And they did an incredible job with this true story that I found about a boy named Gary who finds out that he's a wizard on his 11th birthday. I'd never heard anything like it. Here's a little taste. Hi, my name is Gary. I was raised by my aunt and uncle and they, well, Let's just say that they weren't the nicest. I always wished that my real parents hadn't died in that blimp crash. Pretty good, right? That only costs like $100 and 20 minutes of my time. So I can only imagine the crazy margins that these, these actual content farms are pulling in. And if you're wondering what happened to Gary, he has a fateful meeting with a big burly man named Dad Bod, and he finds out he's a wizard and lives happily ever after. It should be a movie. Anyway, that's all I had for today. I hope you like these stories that are Totally true and not made up or stolen at all because that would be illegal. I'll leave a link to the channel in the description so that you can make me the next big thing in animation. I'll wait. Thanks to old you wanna send phase hun for sending me a message on Instagram. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. If you want me to butcher your name, do the stuff in the places. And I'll see you next time with a video that didn't take me as long to make.